When we last left Paul Pot, formerly Salath Zar, his Khmer Rouge army and refugees of his Khmer Ru- his Khmer Rouge army of refugees and teenagers were off to a bang up start. Had just entered the capital city, Phnom Penh, and the citizens were all too happy to see the civil war end. For a very short time, that is. Because the first thing Paul Pot did when they secured the city was order a complete and utter evacuation of major cities and towns. Phnom Penh has two to three million people in it. Keep that in mind. Every time you mention that place, it just keep thinking of the place from uh, uh, Hunger Games. Pan Am. Oh, Pan Am? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they started going around telling the citizens that the Americans were coming to bomb anywhere that was a major population and that they should flee to the countryside for safety, even though in our last episode we already saw the Americans bomb the shit out of the countryside. So that's not going to stop us. Oh, they went to the countryside. Drat. <laughs> they foiled yeah. our plan. No. Oh. We're fucking the United States. We'll bomb wherever the fuck we want. It's well known that they're like T-Rexes, the Americans are. Their vision isn't based on movement. It's based on building. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> going to a field, they can't see jack shit. We're safe. So, uh, they would encourage them to leave their homes unlocked so the soldiers could go in and take care of anything that needed it. And then they could t- return in a few days. Like, don't worry about feeding your goldfish. We'll take care of it. All three million of you <laughs> will just go feed all your fucking goldfish. But they're like, just leave your houses unlocked. It's fine. Obviously, this is so they can go in and then take whatever they want and do whatever they want with them. But yeah, yeah, just leave your shit open. Go back and look, look at all them goldfish. <laughs> We have more goldfish now than what we had when we left. How did they yeah. do this? My plants are watered. My mow is, if it was my me, is mowed. If it was me, everybody would have come back and all their furniture would be like upside down in their rooms. Yeah, rearrange. You know, yeah, rearrange everything. <laughs> be like Just that one episode. I don't know how, how much you watch Seinfeld over there, but there's an episode where Jerry leaves Kramer in his uh, apartment while he goes and runs errands. And he's in there for like four hours by himself. And in that time, he has taken all the furniture out of Jerry's apartment, put it in his apartment, rearranged everything, um, thrown like a, a a full cocktail party. It just it just filled the place up with people, and then and then put it all back the way it was supposed to be. It was like a montage. Fucking, I love that nice. stuff. <sighs> anyway. Those that refused, so they'd go to the door and knock and be like, hey, the Americans are coming. They're going to bomb everything. You should really get to the countryside for safety if you want to live. And you're like, nah, I think I'll take my chances. We'll be okay. I I don't think the Americans are doing anything. They're like, well, okay. They'd shoot you. (laughs) They'd shoot you in the face. If you refuse to go to the countryside, (laughs) they shot you. So it's, it's, you're either going to die because the Americans are bombing you, or we're going to shoot you in the face. That's one way it doesn't make any sense. It's either, but the thing was, no one was Escape spared. Escape death will kill you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No one was spared. So you couldn't like buy your way out of it, uh, to why you'll find out in a little bit. But rich, poor, sick, healthy, doesn't matter. You're leaving. Even the hospitals were cleared out. And if you weren't able-bodied enough to walk out or have someone wheel you out, well, then, guess what? You didn't leave. (laughs) You were. You were there forever. (laughs) It's, I laugh, but it's really fucking horrible. Because these are two or three million people that are having to just uproot themselves and start walking. Again, they didn't have the public transit system all up and running yet you know civil war yeah 
So it's after terrible. three days, the only ones left were soldiers and diplomats at the French embassy. And they were soon taken by truck to the Thai border. So about a week in, it's just nothing but refugees and teenagers just running around. You know, unsupervised minorities. And all uh, the fish. <laughs> they're just eating all the goldfish, rearranging furniture, having the time of their lives. Now, this mass evacuation was a complete horror show for many. Families separated, some of them never reunited. The Khmer Rouge didn't have enough food or water for the millions, and no shelters waiting along the way. In the first few weeks, around 11 thousand people died due to starvation, disease, and exhaustion. Others were just killed. Members of Lon Nall's army, bureaucrats, government workers, teachers, doctors, any educated intellectual or professional rounded up, taken out of sight, and shot. 19-year-old Swoon Pal describes his experience during the evacuation, quote, my family and I left the city and took the road to Prek Penev. Along the way, I saw Khmer Rouge soldiers waiting in groups of three or four. They searched people and took their watches, radios, glasses, gold, and precious stones. Some even took 500 real bills and threw them in the air, saying, The revolutionary Ankar has put an end to money. Um, the real bill was the uh, currency that Cambodians used at the time, and we will get to what Ankar is here in a minute. We had great difficulty making, it, making any headway because of the enormous crowd leaving town, and also because some Khmer Rouge kept firing shots to scare us. Many people died on that march. The hospital patients who had been driven out, the women who gave birth on the road, the war casualties. We reached Vat Kak at on April 25th, uh, the walk was about 30 kilometers long. Along the way, we saw many dead bodies scattered about everywhere, even in the pagodas, and the stench that came from them was almost unbearable. Yeah, there's That's just women up. giving birth on the, side, on the road as they, you know, walk a little bit, stop, give birth, get walk up, bit, keep stop. walking. Having her baby. Yeah. When the survivors finally got to the countryside, the Khmer Rouge had labor camps waiting. On the 27th, they announced the formation of the new government called the Democratic Kampucha. It would be headed by Sihanouk as chief of state. Didn't see that one coming, did you? <laughs> Never. <laughs> so that the no other Sihanouk. countries so the other countries would see the coup as a return of the king to power. But in reality, Sihanouk was a puppet, and Paul Pot was actually pulling the strings. You know, what we talked about, but the Emperor and Darth Vader. Sihanouk's more Darth Vader. Paul Pot is the Emperor, telling everybody what to do in the background. And the regime's communist affiliation would, for now, not be revealed to the world. Paul Pot and his party leaders would keep their identities unknown, again, for now, Behind the scenes, the supreme leadership of the party was called Ankar, which was faceless, nameless, and all seeing. Names weren't used, instead they even instead they used even more pseudonyms. Paul Pot, which was already a pseudonym for Salazar, was now brother number one. Next in line was Nyun Che, who was brother number two, and so on and so on. Just kept going down the line, brother number three, brother number four, you know. Frame lines full of names. <laughs> just, you know you're just waiting down the line, like, brother 69, come on, brother 69, it's going to be great, brother 69. <laughs> And then you got the other guys like, brother 420, man. I gotta get brother 420, man. I'm going to tell if I don't get it, I'm going to ask him if I can have it anyway. <laughs> now, many of these men who were in the party were his comrades from his Paris days. He brought them, you know, pretty much brought them with him. The next month, Paul Pot would announce to his team that they were too, much like Mao and China, Erase Cambodian history. 
the year of the revolution would be known as year zero. So pretty much nothing before the revolution mattered or existed or happened or anything like that. Year of the revolution was when it all started. And they would cut communication to the outside world. Thank you.